Hey everybody, it's um, gosh, it's been probably three months since we started this thing, just over three months since I started the food forest, and uh, easily three weeks since I've touched anything out there. But I said I would get up updates as I went, and so I figured good, bad, or otherwise, I'll go ahead and do them anyway. But I am doing this project as out of order as they can be. Um, but I really think the only way to make it more wrong is to not do it. So hopefully that's a lesson that even though I'm doing things out of order and uh, catch as catch can whenever I, I can find the time to do it, um, it's still, it's coming. So uh, a few weeks in without me doing anything and uh, I don't remember where I left off the last time. Um, but on the way in, I'm not sure if that was there. I put just a little guardian wall. So there's some cernum cherries, crepe myrtle. Um, yeah, that's it. The um, other stuff was there. Um, walking through, the rain has been off the hook. It's been unbelievable how much water we've gotten. So I have not had a chance to do anything since it's raining pretty much every day when I get home from work. Um, you can see the water level comes all the way up almost to the fence at this point to the edge of the food forest area. Um, I still have some plants, a lot more of them went away um, or got planted out or given a few away, but um, uh, there's a lot more that are starting to get root bound. So I either got to pot them up or put them out. So hopefully soon I'll be able to get them put out there. So coming up, the one thing I will show is the early on, I had a mound and I talked about planting some seeds that are um, support species. And I really didn't speak about what a support species is or what they do, but as you can see, I'll come up a little closer. Um, I've got some moringas going in here. That's uh, the miracle tree. I've got some um, pigeon pea. I can also call those gondules. Um, I've even got some black beans still going down below. Um, and then a lot of what everybody would call weeds happening. <laughs> In between there but um, you know weeds play a role too and so part of the magic of a food forest is um, or any forest really is that all the plants have functions and they have roles that they play in the system so sometimes the plants that we don't necessarily want to grow in a certain space choose to take root and grow um, because we don't want that plant we call it a weed um, but we can learn a lot of lessons from those weeds and in this case where I don't have the time to be out here These weeds are performing functions for me And so as they're growing and they're filling in space, they're holding back erosion and they're gathering nutrients and so a lot of those are um, Pulling up nutrients that later on I'll cut them down and I'll drop them You've heard people talk about chop and drop I'm sure and that's what that means so that that weed species or whatever it is is going to gather up um, nutrients as it grows and it'll grow really fast and usually those things are uh, what we call a pioneer species which means they're the first ones that show up and they grow really really fast and they kind of dominate an area until other species um, can have time to fill in and do their thing uh, in our case we're so used to having a manicured lawn and not having weeds that we fight those weeds and we try to get them to, out of the way um, so this particular dog fennel all I'm going to do as I come through is I will pull those out, I'll shake them off, and then I drop them. And I do that with all the ones that I don't necessarily want to take off. There may be some that I leave a little longer, some that I take out sooner. Um, the particularly aggressive ones um, I tend to take out sooner because I don't want them to go to seed. Um, but when I first moved here, you look out into that pasture, it was nothing but dog fennel. And I mean, it looked like a corn maze of dog fennel, six, seven feet tall. Um, you couldn't see over it when I was sitting in the tractor to try to cut it down. Um, and so of course, everybody had all their recommendations of which chemicals to use and which poisons to put down to take care of it. Um, but really there was nothing underneath it. So taking it out would have just brought in different weed seeds or different um, undesirable plants. So all I did is I left it and I let it do its thing and then I cut it down and then when it came up I cut it down again and I kind of kept doing that and then what would happen is the grasses would take hold and grow where the dog fennel would suffer um, and wouldn't be able to come back up and I didn't let it go to seed. So now as you look back you don't see dog fennel. There's a few here and there obviously but they're um, 
it's not the sea of fennel. The grasses have taken over. Grasses like to be mowed. They need to be mowed. Um, a lot of the weed species do not. So if you keep cutting them back or pulling them up, eventually you will win. So the system I did the last time, I think, was this um, swale-like thing. And as you can see, it's pretty leveled off now. And we've had a lot of water come through here and it, it hasn't eroded at all, which is what I was kind of hoping would happen. Um, I've got some extra branches that showed up that are falling off the trees. Um, like I said, I haven't been in here to do any housekeeping. Uh, but the trees for the most part look okay. The ones that I didn't think would do well aren't. <laughs> this one's a little surprising. This is a, a persimmon, uh, which I've seen persimmons in the area doing outstandingly. So I really thought it would be a set it and forget it kind of plant and it doesn't seem to be um, but that's okay um, i've got some pears that i planted because my daughter said she wanted pears and i didn't think there was any chance they would survive but they're actually doing okay so we'll see how they do as time goes on and once this heat passes and things have a chance to recover um, i don't think there's anything else up this way these are probably new since the last time so what I did is I made a, a blueberry hill, so to speak. And so this little pile goes up in a corner. It's got these tiny little blueberry plants planted in it. And they like acidic soil. So that's pine bark um, that's going through. Um, there's a um, olive in the middle. That's a pomegranate that I air layered. And so I got some mulch back here, but I got more to do. And then as we come around, the corner there's some other little things so that's a fig in here and then back there <laughs> there's a fig that i planted and it was all cleared out when i planted the fig and you can't see the fig anymore it's doing well um, but you sure can see these other uh, natives gone wild and and the not so natives i don't think either one of those are natives um, but that's okay i mean they're filling in the space so at some point i'll come cut them all down and then i'll drop them right where they are i'll mulch over the top and then I'll have some rich soil eventually. Over here, this particular thing is called a falsa. Um, it's very popular in India, it's called a sherbet berry. I have never grown it. I've never known anybody that grew it. So, or I'm sure I know people who grow it, but I don't know they grow it, let's put it that way. Um, they're supposed to be delicious, so I'm hoping it does well. It's, it's probably tripled in size to give you an idea how little it was. Um, and then over here, I have a few Barbados cherries also in mounds and then this is my ice cream bean that has grown a lot since i got it and it was a trial thing it was a throwaway and it, it seems to be doing quite well um, this little grouping of plants i may have to uh, make some adjustments in because the cassava is the bigger one also known as yucca is really loving this spot and it's taking over. So the yakon on the bottom is gonna get choked out, I think. So I may have to dig that up and move it because um, I really didn't expect the cassava to go quite as fast as it's going. This thing's outpacing any of my other cassavas anywhere I have them. Uh, this is the only named variety I've ever had. Um, happy one. So I'm looking forward to eating some of that. And then you can see on the edges of everywhere, the um, weed species or the uh, beneficial support species, we'll call them that, are doing quite well. And I'll come through and do some housekeeping on the ones that I don't want and uh, leave the ones that I do, at least until I don't want them anymore. The chaya has taken off in three months, so that was a, a branch that I stuck in the ground. That's the one of the bananas that has definitely done well happy guy and then I've got an avocado I don't know if that was here the last time we spoke but I planted that a few weeks ago and it seems to be doing quite well I got a lot of new growth on that so as we look at this stuff and I keep saying I'm doing it wrong um, typically what I try to do is I try to plant by function and also by layer, and I'm not gonna talk about what the layers are right now, because it would take too long in this video, it'll get too long. But the functions of the plants, if you 
as you learn, there's different plants have different roles in the system. So there are some that um, fix nitrogen, like leguminous plants that take nitrogen out of the air and put it in the root zone. Um, and they feed the plants around them. And if it's not in the root zone, it's in the leaf. So either way, you can take these really aggressive plants and you can chop those down and you can feed the neighboring plants. You have um, plants that are called a dynamic accumulator, like Moringa is one, where it actually goes and mines the soil and brings lots of um, really um, micronutrients and stuff up into the leaf. That's what makes it a superfood because it pulls those things up into the leaf. So that makes that leaf an exceptional fertilizer plant for other plants. Um, and then there's thing, plants that are just um, insect insectary plants. So they attract pollinators and pollinator species. There's some that are medicinal. There's some that are edible. There's some that are um, just look nice. You know, that's a function. So sometimes aesthetics is important. If, uh, if you don't like being in a space, then you're less likely to be there and you might as well enjoy yourself while you're in the garden. Uh, there's a reason why I put my food forest where I did. Um, one, it was a space that was kind of awkward, um, but it was close enough to the house that it gave me something. It's not too, too far. Um, it's close to where we're going to be putting our vegetable area. So we're going to put some annuals over in that space and there will be trees connecting all the way back to those papayas in the background, all the way here to the food forest but I really enjoy the view. So I like being by the lake. I like when the cows come by to say hi while I'm working and you know, you're throwing stuff over the fence, um, but you should enjoy the space and I sure do. I'm hoping the rain lets up a little bit and the season's coming to an end as far as the rainy season. So maybe I'll get a chance to come out here and play a little bit more and this thing will start to take shape. And I'll try to do a little bit more on functions and layers and, and um, zones as you plant things and explain that as I go. Uh, hope you enjoy the ride. Thanks for watching.